Representative Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I am going to be supporting this article. I would just urge us as a body to take caution with the increase in opioids. I think that we all know that when manufacturers have the option of eating the cost or passing it on to their consumers, nine times out of 10, they're gonna pass it on to their consumers. As I mentioned last year when we had the debate on Kristen's Law, upwards of 80% of heroin addicts start out with a perfectly legal pain prescription. And the majority of the time, the reason that they switch to hard street drugs is cost. I want us to be very wary. I want us to pay very close attention and make sure that we are not generating new addicts by making pain medicine that they need impossible for them to afford. Again, I plan on voting for this bill, but I just urge us to be more cautious in the way that we make legislation directed at addicts and make sure that we have an understanding of addiction and the processes by which people become addicted um, when we make these laws. So I hope that my colleagues will join me in keeping an eye on the opioid crisis. And you know, as, as Whip Chippendale mentioned earlier, I will vote yes with trepidation. I, I very much hope that this does what the intent is, and that's to, to curb the use, but my, my great fear is that we'll be creating more addicts. So I urge caution. Thank you. Representative, please. Mr. Speaker, I'm rising in opposition to this legislation. First, for what Representative Walsh just mentioned, I think I had uh, a similar argument about the limiting of the prescriptions uh, last week on a piece of legislation, which we, or was it this week on the floor? I forget. And also, um, I'm concerned about the continual lack of increase in the uh, nursing home rates. Uh, One percent every year, we're we, we tend to want them to increase regulations, they're, they're to abide by regulations, and at some point very soon, I expect we're gonna ask them to increase the minimum wage as well. And uh, if that happens, these institutions, the nursing homes, are gonna need more than 1%. This 1% every single year just is not gonna do it. I believe Leader Sakarchi mentioned we had a piece of legislation because we wanna make these quality facilities. We wanna do this. But if we only raise, we only give them 1% a year, it's not going to happen. So we have to make a decision. Do we really want to fund these or not? Because the only people that are suffering are the residents of these homes. And that's what we're doing by just raising this by 1%. And I'm going to correct myself, not just the residents, but the employees. Because as, again, was expressed, most of these places are owner-operated. You know, some of these folks live, the owners live in these places. They can't afford to give their employees raises if we're increasing their regulatory burden every year and we're only giving an additional 1% every year. So again, based on those two points, Mr. Speaker, I'm going, to, I'm going to oppose this article. Thank you. Representative Wrangland Vassal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a question for the chair, please. Uh, the, for the floor manager's yes. uh, representative, Malsakowski, proceed. He'll yield. Thank you. Um, representative, I want to ask a couple of questions. Um, Go right ahead. Does this article impact in any way um, maternal health care? Um, maternal health care, are you talking about the doulas? No, it does not. Yeah. It, it doesn't? It does not. Was there any conversations around that? Yeah, and we, um, so you, I believe, testified um, in-house finance when the, the doulas um, legislation came up and we had a very uh, vibrant and comprehensive discussion during that committee hearing and also after. Well, I just want to share with you that, uh, and share with this body that it's, I think, we have missed the opportunity to really save Medicaid dollars, but more importantly, to save women's lives, and primarily black women's lives. Um, the Centers for Disease Control states that black women die three to four times more than white women because of access to care, 
And I think at some point, this, we cannot afford to wait. We cannot afford to wait while women are dying. And so I think, I, I, I'm not sure what we were thinking, why we did not think of including that in this bill, but I think at some point, we really need to address the issue of black maternal health. We also know one of the governor's priority was to decrease the number of C-sections and increasing, with doula intervention, we do know that the number of C-sections are decreased. We also know that the number of babies in the NICU are in decreased as well. So if we're really serious about saving money, which we talk a lot about in this chamber, but most importantly, saving black women's lives, then I really think we have really messed up on this one. Thank you. Whip Chippendale. Thank you, Speaker. I have, would, um, the floor manager of this particular, yes, thank you. I was going to ask for you by name, but I thought that would be inappropriate. He will yield. Proceed. <laughs> thank you. Um, on the accreditation that, that you spoke of in, in your amendment earlier, um, what, what was uh, allotted for funding for that? So I believe it was 500000 500000 Where did that figure come from? So historically, if you look at the, um, the history of the original um, proposal, um, because statutorily it was passed in 2010, I believe one of my colleagues. Yes, 2010. Yes. A couple of seats back, um, it was $450,000 initially allocated to that. And with our financial staff running the numbers, that was up to 500000 Just to make sure that we were able to provide a comprehensive um, process as possible. So um, it, after hearing from uh, the oversight, in oversight after hearing from um, a woman who was representing the parenting project and this issue of accreditation came up, certainly it caught all of our attention, right? We, in my office that next day, I, I reached out to the, uh, the council on accreditation, the, the outfit that the state had already um, spoken to originally back in 2010, and I, we asked them to please update us on what it would cost for the accreditation process. And I have a, a three-page letter from them uh, dated Jul, uh, June 18th. And the cost that they quoted updated to today's numbers is $245,765, roughly half of, or less than half of what we're allotting to this. And furthermore, it's only $83,000 a year for the next three years to do it. So I'm a little interested to f learn why we would put half a million dollars in there for something that doesn't cost half that much. I, I completely understand your concerns and you're actually, so you're almost just capturing half of the process. So with those individuals that you may have spoken, that you have spoken with, it develops a process for that price, I believe, as well. Um, and, then, and then we also have um, the, the states going to create the plan after in conjunction with the recommendations by the creditors. And there's also, it's, a, it's structured so that if you don't use all of the funding for this project, it just folds back over. It would do what? Just put your it microphone would be re, up. Re, Lift your mic. There you go. Reappropriated. It would be reappropriated to the next year. For the purpose of what? If it ends up costing less, why would we reappropriate money to it? For the for the purposes of the continuation of the plan. So the and whatever the plan costs. The extra two hundred and fifty thousand is to accommodate the work that the state will have to do. Correct. Why? Um, wouldn't it be more prudent to wait for their recommendations before we try to plan on how much it's going to cost to implement them? Well, when it, uh, some departments you may want to take that approach, but with DCYF, when time is of the essence, you want to be able to act as quickly as possible. So if the um, allocation and the 
the, the process is developed, we would want to be able to hit the ground running as quickly as possible just to make sure that all of the children in the care of DCYF are properly protected during that period of time, well, as I'm, quickly as possible. Sure, I mean, I'm certainly um, okay. very thank, happy. Thank you, Representative. It's not a flawed conversation. Uh, Thank you, Representative Moslikowski. Proceed, so, proceed, thank you, Speaker. So I'm, I'm certainly happy to hear that we're, we are dealing with this. Um, and I, I agree it's urgent. I'm not sure why when we voted it into law in 2010, we refused to fund it all these years. Um, but certainly, you know, I, I had some amendments as well that this, th these um, by design Trump, and I'm happy that we're doing this. I'm happy that we are seeking this accreditation because certainly this is a step that is not only necessary based on the recommendations we have. 30 seconds. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, but this is, this is something that we've been calling for and we legislated into existence. I am looking forward to the results of this process. I am hopeful that we stay on track and I'm hopeful that we continue to fund this to the extent that it needs to be funded. Thank you very much. Leader Filippi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Marzokowski. I, I really am heartened that we've put this amendment in requiring accreditation. Uh, in the original budget that we passed last week, it, it wasn't in here. And, and oddly enough, Republicans had submitted amendments to do just the same thing. And actually, yours is more aggressive. And, and I, I thank you for that, because this is a necessary process. Uh, I want to thank the Speaker and yourself, Representative Marzakowski, for having open mind to the amendments that we submitted. And if it was mere coincidence that you guys submitted a similar amendment, great minds think alike. But if it wasn't, I thank you for being open-minded uh, to Republican amendments during this budget process. Thank you. I think we all observed the hearings in the last several weeks and are aware of the situation. But thank you for your good work. Representative McLaughlin. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, question for the floor manager. He will yield. Proceed. Yes, for you, uh, Jimmy, anytime. Rep. Majikowski, uh, that 1% for the nursing homes, uh, in reference to the 1%, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, but what does that represent in federal dollars? So, so it's matched by half. It's matched. So that 1% is actually 2%. Am I correct? It's 1%, 3.6 million. Please? 3.6 .6 all funds. That's what it million. represents. Correct. So, uh, you, know, you know, the 2 and 1%, it doesn't sound very good, but when you look at the federal dollars, it's, you know, uh, substantial. Thank you.